Good morning, everyone. Dr. Christopher Mitchell, aka Kerm Martian here. And I'd like to show you the new Norland Research E3 robot. Rick over at Norland kindly sent me this a few months ago, and I got to play around with it a little bit and post about it on Chemitech, but I'd like to make an actual video and show you this calculator robot in action. This is a new version of their classic robot that they've made for the new TI-84 Plus CE graphing calculator, which now no longer has the old 2.5 millimeter uh, stereo I.O. port at the top of the calculator. They had that from the TI-82 all the way up to the TI-84 Plus C Silver Edition, all of which could be used with an old version of this robot that had that same 2.5 millimeter pin on it and could communicate over the calculator serial uh, control protocol. So today I will be showing you how we'll use this TI-84 Plus CE to get this robot set up and give it a test. So the first thing I need to do is I'm going to uh, slot my TI Innovator Hub into this robot. And that's an important part of this because the TI Innovator Hub connects to the TI-84 Plus CE over USB. You can see right there. Um, it has the ports that you may have seen in some of our other videos and articles for sensors. It has a header on this other end that can connect to digital and analog inputs and outputs. And it has a TI launch pad inside there. So the innovator hub will just slot into the robot right here. Do, 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 do. And that set of 20 pins there will mate with the launch pads, or the innovator rather, pins. There we go, I'll slot it in. Now I will put a battery in here. I've already put the other five in, there's just the sixth one. My trusty Ikea batteries. And close this up again. And now I need to connect the calculator to the launch pad. So I'll take my, my mini USB cable, thread it up through here. Kind of hooks it into there. There we go. And then I'll get my calculator going right here. There we go. Launch pad lights up. And we are set. So the first thing we'll do is try to make some of these motors move. The robot has two motors, one that moves the left wheel back and forward, one that moves the right wheel back and forward, and it also has two sensors, the two buttons that the bumper, that when you hit the bumper, get depressed. Uh, inside here, if you can see, is a circuit board. This communicates between the launch pad and the motors and sensors, and then there's that battery pack on the bottom as well. These two wheels provide locomotion. There's also a free rolling caster here that'll allow the robot to kind of rotate on that caster. And it's built of this nice durable material. So uh, I think one of the primary applications of this robot is teaching robotics and programming in classrooms. And it seems pretty sturdy for the classroom setting. So let's see if we can get this to spin some motors. Alrighty, now I've added a simple program to this calculator that I just typed. Let me take a look in here and show you what it looks like. So it's called RBTTST for robot test. That of course doesn't matter. You can name a program anything you want. I'm just going to zoom in on the screen there. So it starts by connecting digital dot out one. So the out command, the digital out um, mapping inside the launch pad will go from inside the innovator hub will go from BB one, which is one of the pins on that 20 pin header on the front to digital out one. So anytime we say set digital out, we'll be able to control what's connected to BB1. So we'll set digital out one to one. So we'll turn it on, we'll wait two seconds, and then we will turn it off again. And then at the very end, we will disconnect that digital out so that we can then connect something else to that digital out if we want. So let me show you what this will do. I also need to reach in here, and this is something that is important to not miss, and switch on the robot. Now, let me zoom out again and show you what this is going to look like. So, I'm going to lift this up so it doesn't run away. And run robot test. There we go. That wheel moves forward. Now, this can move either wheel backward or forward. So, let's change this to BB2. So, that's the second pin on that 20 pin breakout. Try again. Now, it moves backwards. Now, if I were to change it to BB3... 
BB3 right there, you'll see that now the other wheel will move forward. And then if I change it to BB4, it'll move backwards. So there we have all our wheels moving. Now we can also get input from those sensors from the buttons on the front connected to that bumper. So I've made a more complicated program for that. And let me show you what that looks like. It's called Evade. And once again, I will zoom in on the screen so you can see what's going on in this program. So it's a little bit more complicated. We start by connecting digital outs 1, 2, 3, and 4 to BB1, 2, 3, and 4. That way we can move both wheels backwards and forwards by sending a digital out signal to 1, 2, 3, or 4. And then we also connect digital ins 5 and 6 to BB5 and 6. So digital dot in 5 and digital dot in 6 will connect to the left and right bumpers, respectively. Now we start an infinite, semi-infinite loop, a loop that will loop until you press a key on the keyboard. Repeat get key means repeat until get key is not zero. So until we press a key on the calculator physical keyboard, the calculator will keep going around this loop. It'll first read digital dot in five. So check the left bumper and store that result in variable R. Then it'll check the other bumper, digital dot in six and store that result in S. So R will contain zero or one based on whether the left bumper was depressed. S will contain zero or one depending on whether the right bumper was depressed. And then if either R or S, so if the sum of R plus S is not zero, if either R plus S is one, either, either R or S is one, then we'll go into a little conditional block here where we will make the robot evade that movement. So if R was pressed, if the left bumper was pressed, it'll make the left wheel go backwards. If the right bumper was pressed, it'll make the right wheel go backwards. It'll wait 0 0.3 seconds, and then it'll turn whatever motors were on off again. And because it doesn't have then and else and end here, it will turn one motor on if one bumper was pressed, it'll turn the other motor on if the other bumper was pressed, and if both of them were pressed, both motors will go on. So let me show you what this looks like in action. Also, I am omitted the disconnect statements at the end of that program, but you should definitely have them at the end of all of your programs so that the Innovator Hub has been kind of reset into a state that makes it ready for the next program to run. So we will run program evade, and nothing happens at first. I'm going to rotate it so you can see what happens. Now watch what happens if I press the bumper. It runs away. And if I press the other bumper, it runs away again. And if I press both bumpers, oops, I didn't quite press them. It runs backwards because both of those motors are now turning on. So Rex the Robot as a very good namer of things, name my little Norland robot, can now run away from danger. So that is the Norland Research E3 robot. It is currently available, I believe. It connects via mini USB to your calculator. So all you need is the TI-84 Plus CE calculator, the robot itself, and a launch pad, uh, an innovator hub. Excuse me, I keep calling that. The board inside is called the launch pad. The hub itself is an innovator. And you can experiment with robotics and programming. And you can do a lot of things with this because you have the programming processing power of the calculator and the robot. Oops. <laughs> you can do things like you could have this navigate a room randomly, and every time it hit a wall, it could try to keep a map of where the walls were to build up a map of the room. It could solve mazes. Um, if you use the brightness sensor on the launch pad or connected an external brightness sensor, you could do things like make it follow lines drawn on the floor and so on. I look forward to exploring this more and posting about it on Chemitech. If you have other things you'd like me to experiment with with the robot, with the TI-84 Plus CE, uh, please feel free to post on this video if you have ideas for other future videos about graphing calculators, programming, Minecraft and trains, or anything else that interests you. I hope you will stick around subscribe so you'll see my future videos. And if you haven't already, definitely stop by Chemitech, that's C-E-M-E-T-E-C-H dot net, where we do a lot of stuff with graphing calculators and STEM education. So see you in the next video.